Hi. <sighs> Good morning. Can I go back to sleep yet, please? Make coffee. Coffee is liquid, not sleep. Three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Thursday, August 27th, 2020. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Came out good. Um, I'm exhausted. I'm really tired. So, this was the second night in a row of the stupid squirrel and my stupid roof being a stupid nocturnal animal. Um, good morning, John. I woke up every, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45. I don't think I had a full 90 minute sleep cycle all night. And I tried to go to bed early because of last night. Um, just some of the, the tricks of the acoustics of where, and, and maybe this isn't a squirrel, maybe this is a mouse, because there must have been one in the wall, and it sounded like it was chewing on my notebook on the floor. And twice I jumped up and flipped the light on and... and not only did I not see a mouse there, I didn't see anything, any evidence of it, my notebook being chewed on. So, oh, it, I don't know that I can do a third night of this. I'm so tired. I'm going to, I'm going to try to take a nap. Um, I've got a busy day. Busy day with clients, meetings have a very exciting meeting at 10, 10.30, I think it's at 10.30. So it's no secret that, good morning, Stacy. Um, the challenge with a have a heart is that the, the access to my attic is not easy. Uh, there's, a, there's a panel and getting it to rest on, on something, you know, it's just, it's just pink insulation. Um, coupled with the fact that it's gross and it's an attic and it's creepy and I don't want to be up there. Uh, so yesterday I threw a bunch more uh, poison up there. Those little, those bait blocks, I've got a whole bucket and I just chucked half a dozen of them up there. So hopefully it finds it and eats them and dies. And I hate rooting for an animal to die. That really sucks. I have gone down the road with people of, hey, is it possible to keep these animals from getting into my attic? And they've said, no. Uh, the only way that one would do that would mean that there is not enough airflow and it would mold and be very bad. So critters or mold? Apparently we go, we go with critters. Uh, it was cold last night, 45 degrees when I woke up which is why I'm wearing the, the warm robe. I actually dug out the warm robe because the, the, the summer robe wasn't enough. What happened yesterday? I spent the day uh, filming video episodes for a client. They will become some sort of podcasty thing. That was good. Got to, got to hang out. Uh, he has three dogs, so hung out with the dogs. He and his wife made me dinner. And that brings us to now. <sighs> yeah. That's, that's yesterday. That's today. I've got a... Oh, and the power went out. <laughs> oh, yesterday was such, this is like such a silly week. Uh, power went out about 8 o'clock. I was supposed to have a call at 8.30, and so I'm walking around my backyard, you know, holding the phone up. I got enough of a signal to reply, to send an email to somebody 
uh, about my 8.30 call say, I will try to answer. And that was the last time I got a signal. So I ended up scrambling to leave the house early, earlier, about two hours earlier than I'd planned, which meant I didn't do the books yesterday. Got through a bunch of other stuff. I hung out at Panera for like 45 minutes and got some work done on my way to my clients. I still got to do the books. I read I read something on Instagram this morning. My, my routine is off, so I pretty much just sat here and thought longfully about coffee and waited. I waited. Tired as I am, I waited to have coffee with all of you. And uh, a friend, former episode guest, hey, it's Thursday, let's take a look at that. Uh, former episode guest, Put something out on Facebook, on Instagram, and it was uh, it's pretty powerful. And it was one of the most articulate things I've seen from martial arts school owners, a, a martial arts school owner about what's going on right now in closures and what I, I think I want to say about it. I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to mention her. That narrows it down a lot. I'm not going to mention this person. Is just this idea that we have identified these problems and not provided solutions. You have to close your martial arts school. Okay. Let's, I, can, I can get behind that. But we're not going to provide you an, an alternative on how to live and support your family. Those of you out there who uh, watch the news and are, are not business owners may not realize how challenging these, the financial programs that came out are. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm not meaning to skew political here. I'm just saying factually... Um, it's not easy. And so let's put that aside for a moment. If you come with a problem, this happened with a client the other day. I had a client come to me and this client has completely blown past the scope of the project that I was supposed to do. I've done double the work that I should have. And I, and I permitted them, you know, I didn't stop them because I'm trying to make this person happy. And I found as I was writing to them yet again, I said, you know, I won't identify a problem without providing a solution. And I think those two points connecting in time, that client email and reading this thing from my friend, really struck me. Because to me, if you identify a problem, if you point out a failing in what someone does, I think it's only appropriate to offer a potential solution or to assist with a solution if it impacts you. To simply say, that's wrong, you're wrong, it's wrong, can't do that, stop. I don't think that works. If someone tells me, oh, what's, a, what's an innocuous, okay. Uh, let's say someone says, you know, lawnmowers use too much gasoline and, and uh, contribute too much carbon dioxide. You can't mow your lawn anymore with gas, okay? But what can I use? It, <laughs> right? Um, and there are plenty of areas systemically where we do provide solutions and I think that that's important. So I'd just like you to think about that, that the next time you look at a problem, especially the next time you share a problem, identify a failing with someone, provide a solution, provide an alternative, an option, something 
that is sensible. Well, you know, instead of hiring someone to cut your grass or mowing it yourself, you could use hand trimmers. That's not a reasonable solution. It takes me four hours to cut the grass with a mower, including reasonable breaks. Uh, I don't know that even if I did it full time, if hand trimmers would, would work. I think it would grow faster than I would be able to get to it. So obviously, that, now that's a ridiculous and an extreme solution, uh, uh, example. But I think you get where I'm going. I made the coffee extra strong this morning. I put a bunch of theanine in it. Um, Long-time listeners may remember that theanine is something that I've used frequently with uh, with coffee. Not much lately. Theanine is a non-essential amino acid, and it binds with caffeine, so it stabilizes in the uptake. So instead of having a spike and a crash with caffeine, it tends to be more level, and it's a much more enjoyable experience especially on days like today, where I'm probably going to drink 46 cups of coffee. Oh, you know what else didn't help my cup of my, my sleep? <laughs> so I was at my client's, and uh, the wife was really excited. She picked up a second-hand espresso machine. So here we are. It's 7 o'clock. I'm getting ready to leave. But they wanted me to stay later. But I, was, I said, no, I have to come home and do the books. But I was so fried when I got home from the day. I, I couldn't. Um, so hopefully hopefully there's money in checking accounts and that I didn't blow through and uh, pay transfer fees. We'll find out. But she made me two shots of espresso at 7 o'clock. So I'm like, ah. It was really good, and if it wasn't for all the cleaning that clearly one has to do with these, I would want an espresso machine, but I'm happy with my pour over. Okay, so today's Thursday episode, episode 531, Martial Arts Lifestyle versus Hobby. This is a little similar to an episode from six months ago, maybe, martial arts as a lifestyle. But this is a different take on it. And hopefully you'll check it out, whether that's here on YouTube or in your podcast feed. And, uh, you know, I don't ask for this often. If you haven't left a review for Martial Arts Radio at any point, please do. And if you haven't subscribed to the Whistlekick channel here, I hope you do. And if you could hit the little thumbs up like button on this video, other people will see be more likely to see it. There are lots of ways to help us, and they're not all financial. So, the more you can do, the better it helps. <laughs> and we have a comment on episode 531 from some scammy person. It says, I'm single with a bunch of frowny faces. So we're going to, we're going to remove that. And we'll go back to notifications. All right. We've got stuff today from Frank and Jen. Oh, okay. So we talked about cat monkey coffee. Um, Jen uh, did, the, did the research for us. So I'm going to read this. Here's what Wikipedia has to say. Coffee Luwak is a coffee that consists of partially digested coffee cherries, the beans, which have been eaten and defecated by the Asian palm civet. It is therefore also called civet coffee. The cherries are fermented as they pass through a civet's intestines, and after being defecated with other fecal matter, they are collected. A cup of civet coffee goes for about $20 to $40, it looks like. The, the first part was, quote, starting with a cup of, that's not quotes. However, there's more. Apparently, the most expensive coffee in the world is in Thailand, black ivory elephant dung coffee. That retails for about $50 a cup. Here's the reason they state. Research indicates that during digestion, the enzymes of the elephant break down coffee protein. Since protein is one of the, many, one of the main factors responsible for bitterness in coffee, less protein means almost no bitterness. 
Um, I like coffee. I like coffee a lot. I don't know that I like coffee enough that I'm going to spend $50 on a cup of it. Let's pretend I was. If I was going to spend $50 on a cup of coffee, it would probably be the least likely to have been through an animal's intestines. I feel like poop coffee should be cheap because that's gross, right? If you were to market coffee and say, hey, this coffee came through the bowels of an elephant, would you expect that coffee to cost more or less? I think we'd all expect it to cost less. It sounds like a cheap way of processing coffee. I feel like you could harvest those enzymes and recreate them. There's got to be another way. There has to be another way. It's like that, that uh, scene from which Austin Powers is it? The one with Fat Bastard. Is that the first one? The second one. I think it's the second one. Mike Myers at his best. All right, and then we have three quotes from Frank. Only hardness or softness creates an inability to deal effectively with the fluctuations of life. Sikichi Toguchi. Only hardness or, oh, oh, there we go. Only hardness or only softness creates an inability to deal effectively with the fluctuations of life. This is, this is the yin-yang. This is why... This is why it is what it is. It is such an elegant symbol and it applies in so many ways. You've got, see, now I'm just hearing noises and every noise I hear just, is that something out of my ceiling? Well, I've got the cat asleep under a blanket right there. You know, you look at the yin yang, yin yang, uh, I forget the Korean term, but you know what I mean. It's the, the duality, but even within each, you've got a little bit of the other because they don't exist independently. There's always a little bit of soft and hard and vice versa. And we keep societally pushing towards these black and white, these, these hard line divisions in everything and it just the world doesn't work that way society cannot work that way people don't work that way that's not how the universe is and it's so frustrating and i watch people have these conversations on social media and someone maybe myself will start with something very general and very positive and very um very philosophical, you know, maybe indicate something like this and people will respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just takes one person to say, yeah, but the bigger part, and it just all goes downhill from there because people don't understand. They have normalized their own views so strongly that they cannot consider an alternative. And the moment you can't consider an alternative view, all breaks loose. That's what we're watching right now. And I am, I am nervous. I'm glad I live where I live. Next. I can think of no more worthwhile aim than pursuing mastery in this craft while transcending one's own limitations. Chris Matakis. I can think of no more worthwhile aim than pursuing mastery in this craft while transcending one's own limitations. I don't have anything to add to that. That is beautiful. I want this Chris Matakis guy on the show. Lessie, if you're watching, find him. Or her. Chris could be a woman's name. Find Chris Matakis. Let's interview Chris Matakis. It's kind of a fun name to say. Matakis. Probably saying it wrong. It's going to be one of those days. I'm feeling slap happy. Next. 
I applaud those of you who have endured this long in watching me. To achieve what others won't, you have to do what others don't. Lazar Angelov. Lazar Angelov? I'm not sure. To achieve what others won't, you have to do what others don't. This is such a fundamental approach and one that intellectually everyone understands. They get it, yes. But then do they do it? If you want to be the best at this or stand out in that, you have to do things differently. If everyone else is Let's say you want to be, let's keep it in martial arts, you want to be the best point fighter. Let's say that's a goal of yours. What do you do? Do you think about point fighting? Train when it comes up at class, every whatever? No. You have to do more than the person who is currently best. Because they're already the best. So you have to do more than what they're doing. Not the same. More. You have to be better. What does that mean? What does that look like in that context? Hopefully it means you're, you're buying the whistle kick programs because all three of them would apply very well to those goals, that, that goal. Speed, strength and conditioning, fight conditioning. And you could actually do all three of them. We haven't written a hybrid for how yet, but you could. You gotta, you gotta train. You gotta practice everything. My mind is playing tricks on me. I'm very aware of this right now, and I apologize. I'm hearing, I'm hearing things that I'm pretty sure are not there. Yay. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to wrap this up. We all have things that are important to us. We all have goals, we all have pursuits. Maybe they're martial arts, maybe they're professional, maybe they're personal. There are ways to do more, to do better, to get smarter at whatever it is. If those things are important to you, do that. If you're watching this show, you're probably also listening to martial arts radio. Martial arts is probably important to you. You're probably going to listen to today's episode on martial arts lifestyle versus hobby and put yourself squarely in the lifestyle camp. Awesome. How important is it to you? What else are you doing? Are you training? Are you progressing? Are you intellectually addressing your failures, your, your limitations, your lacking, your deficient skills. You can, you should. How do you get better at those things? If, you, if you're not a good cook, you can watch videos, read books, go to classes. If your forms aren't very good, you can watch videos, read books, go to classes, train with certain people, practice on your own, set goals, compete, lots of ways. If you want to improve at something, the only reason you don't improve is because you haven't made it a priority. It's the only reason. It doesn't mean you're going to be the best in the world. I'm not, at 41, I'm not going to make it to the NBA. It doesn't matter how hard I train. doesn't matter who I train with. doesn't matter what I do. It's not happening. There was a very, very, very small shot of it happening ever. <laughs> but I believe in my work ethic enough that if it was really important to me, I could have done it. The math wouldn't work now. 
But beyond ridiculous things, could I get really good at basketball so that, you know, if I went and played pickup basketball with people, I could dominate? Sure, absolutely. And be all the more fun because nobody would expect it out of someone who's my height. You can do that with anything. You can get better at anything. So don't be afraid to get better. If you follow me personally on Instagram, you may see my Instagram stories full of coffee today because that's how we're getting through. I'm going to try to take a nap. Maybe I'll sleep on the couch tonight. We'll see. Go check out today's episode of Martial Arts Radio. Uh, support Whistle Kick in whatever way you can. Uh, make sure you hit that like button. Please help spread the show. Subscribe, notifications. Patreon, whistlekick.com, First Cup 15. 6.30 a.m. Eastern, weekdays, YouTube, later... Thank you to Jen. Thank you to Frank. I'm going to go. Have a great day, everyone. I will see you back here tomorrow for Friday. Take care. Peace.